Nowadays with the advancements in electronic fuel injection systems, tuning a car's engine can be easily done with the click of a button. However, it wasn't always this easy. Before the arrival of electronic fuel injection systems, mechanics and car enthusiasts had to make do with what is commonly referred to as a carburetor. In this video, we'll be going over what is a carburetor, how they work, and why they are no longer found on newer cars. Engines rely on the combustion of fuel and oxygen from the air. In order to achieve the most effective combustion, there must be enough oxygen molecules to burn every fuel molecule. This is also known as the stoichiometric air-fuel ratio, which is usually around 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel. When you have too much air, this is what's known as running lean, which may give better fuel economy. If you have too much fuel, this is known as running rich, which may give better performance. Both are to a certain extent, sometimes with diminishing returns. If the air-fuel ratio isn't right, the engine may be prone to knocking or pre-detonation, which may damage the engine. Of course, there is a balance that must be met with the air-fuel ratio, and this is where modern ECUs come in handy. The ECU reads a bunch of data from a variety of sensors to determine how the engine is running, and adjusts itself accordingly. For example, the ECU may see that the engine is running a bit lean, and so it tells the fuel system to add a bit more fuel to keep it running in the most optimal condition. Unfortunately, earlier cars didn't have this privilege of computer-based electronic fuel injection. In the early days of the automobile, people had to make do with the carburetor, a mechanical way of controlling the air-fuel mixture. There are many existing configurations and designs of carburetors, but the simplest design resembles a large vertical air pipe above the engine cylinders with a horizontal fuel chamber joined onto one side. As the air flows down the pipe, it has to pass through a narrow kink in the middle, which makes the air speed up and causes the pressure to fall. This kinked section is called a venturi. The drop in air pressure creates a sucking effect or vacuum that draws air in through the fuel chamber. This vacuum pulls in fuel from the chamber to join the downward flow of air. But how can we adjust the amount of fuel pulled? The carburetor has two swiveling valves above and below the venturi. At the top, there's a valve called the choke that regulates how much air can flow in. If the choke is closed, less air flows down through the pipe and the venturi sucks in more fuel. This makes the engine run richer. This is usually handy when the engine is cold, for starting up, or running slowly. Beneath the venturi, there's a second valve called the throttle. The more the throttle is open, the more air flows through the carburetor and the more fuel it sucks from the chamber. With more fuel and air flowing in, the engine is able to combust more air and fuel molecules, releasing more energy and thus creating more power. That's why opening the throttle makes a car accelerate. It's the equivalent of blowing on a campfire to supply more oxygen and make it burn more quickly. The throttle valve is usually connected to the accelerator pedal in a car via a wire, since electronic throttle bodies didn't exist back then. Inside of the fuel chamber, there is a float that adjusts the fuel level. Once it gets low, the float drops accordingly and allows more fuel to enter the chamber. When enough fuel has entered the chamber, the float rises and seals the chamber inlet. So that's roughly how a carburetor works, but how do these stack up against our modern electronic fuel injection systems? In terms of emissions and fuel economy, Electronic fuel injection or EFI can be more precisely controlled and adjusted on the fly using the ECU, resulting in reduced fuel consumption and fewer emissions. This is the main reason why it began to replace a carburetor in the 1970s. As for power and performance, EFI is much better as fuel delivery can be tuned to match driver demand and also adapt according to the conditions and situation through the ECU sensors. Carburetors are precise, but not accurate basically meaning that while they might be consistent, they cannot account for changes in air or fuel temperature or atmospheric pressure or any other variable. For this reason, any slight change like temperature, humidity, or aftermarket modifications may cause an impact to the performance. Lastly, for cost and complexity, carburetors have it hands down over fuel injection as they are purely mechanical devices. With a can of carburetor cleaner, simple hand tools, and maybe a couple of spare parts, you can completely rebuild a carburetor on your own pretty much wherever you are. On the other hand with fuel injection, even with years of training and experience, a few thousand dollars in diagnostics gear, and tuning know-how, you may still need a tow truck to get you off the road should you experience a more extreme issue. Most small engines such as those on lawnmowers and snowblowers are still equipped with carburetors simply because they are not emissions regulated, inexpensive, simple, and reliable. As a result of increasingly tighter emissions regulations, as well as an increasing demand for higher performance engines and with the arrival of the ECU, electronic fuel injection systems began to replace carburetors, with the 1994 Isuzu pickup being one of the very last cars to use a carburetor. Of course, there are still a few diehard enthusiasts out there who still run carburetors in their cars, often vintage muscle cars. Additionally, 
carburetors may even freeze up during winters, when the evaporated fuel cools the carburetor to a point where it is cold enough to condense water from the air. For these reasons, carburetors have been rendered obsolete by automakers, with only car enthusiasts with older cars still sticking by it. Anyways, I hope this video clears up what a carburetor is and why it is no longer used today. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and if you want to see more content like this, please do subscribe. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.